Today I'm sharing is several ideas for wreaths for your front door this holiday season. Hey there, my name is Yami. I am your Latina next door. Welcome back to Me Casa, where I share my love for home decor and DIYs on a budget. If that's something you enjoy, please make sure to hit like and subscribe so that you too can become part of the familia. The holiday season is a full on, and if you're looking for ideas for what to create for your front door or any kind of wreaths this holiday season, I have several DIYs for you in this video, some from the past and some brand new. And I'm sure you've noticed that wreath prices are getting astronomical, as well as the supplies that you need to create your own. So my last three wreaths are gonna be made from the same wreath base. I'm gonna show you how to create one wreath base to create three completely different looking wreaths for your front door. That way, all you have to do is change out a few things every year and you'll have a brand new wreath for your front door and no one would suspect a thing. With that being said, let's get started. I love creating my own wreaths for my front door. And I had these two wire wreath frames that you can get at your local dollar store. And one of them happened to fit right inside the other. So I thought I'd join them together using very small zip ties. One of them was just gonna be too thin for this look. After the zip ties were secured, I cut off the excess pieces. Since this wreath was going to be white, I went ahead and spray painted it with some leftover spray paint that I had in my stash, and I did both the front and the back of it. For the next step, I got this thick yarn that I bought at Hobby Lobby, and it was on sale for 30% off, so it was just under $5. Next, you're gonna take three pieces that you pre-measured and you're gonna tape them down and create a braid. When you measure these out to cut them for length, you're gonna to wanna to wrap them around your wreath and then wrap them over a little bit more onto itself about a fourth of the way, as indicated by the red arrows. Now, the reason you have to add a little bit more is because when you braid them, you will actually shrink the length and it might not be as long as you need it if you don't add a little bit extra to those yarn pieces. Once you're finished with your braid, you're gonna want to lay it on top of the wreath. I started on the exterior of it and I worked my way inward. Now I did one line at a time. And I simply applied hot glue on small sections of the wire wreath and pressed the yarn down on top of it. When I reach the other end, I make sure that the end pieces are nice and braided down. Then I hot glue it as close as possible to the other end and cut off any excess and just tuck those end pieces downward and inward and hot glue the two pieces together. Because the yarn is so fluffy, you can barely even tell that that's the end piece. Next, you're gonna do the same thing with the next braid. Now, because I wanted some different texture, I decided to go in the opposite direction of the braid so that you have one going one way, one another way, and then the final one on the inside will be going the same direction as the outer braid. Once the second one is done, you can start on your third. And as you can see, three braids around this form wreath is the perfect size to cover the entire wire form. And you'll only need one roll of this yarn if you wish to do something like this yourself with some yarn left over. I knew I wanted some winter greenery and I picked up these picks at Hobby Lobby on clearance from their after Christmas sale and I thought these would be perfect. You can either buy something like this or you can actually use anything that you have remaining from your Christmas stash. And what I like to do before I glue anything down is kind of lay it out on my wreath to make sure that everything looks nice. And then I start to hot glue it. Now here I have 
just a mixture of pine with pine cones as well as some really shiny eucalyptus leaves now I don't need that long pick stem so I just took some wire cutters and I cut them down and then using some hot glue I adhered them onto the wreath now because you are hot gluing it onto the yarn portion of the wreath it is good to add hot glue on several areas of the pick and it kind of helps keep them in place not only on the wreath but it also allows you to kind of form them the way you want them to show on your wreath so it'll give you a chance to open up the leaves open up the branches and keep them in place next i had some ribbon that i had left over from last spring and because of the neutral burlap and the white stripes i thought it would be perfect for this i didn't have enough to make a large bow so i do end up creating a burlap bow for the back of it to give it a little bit more presence on the wreath that way it doesn't look too small and then i simply attach the bows onto the wreath with some hot glue and because the wire is on the back side of the yarn, you don't need to add anything additional in order to hang it. This is pretty much it for this one. For this next piece, I am going to be making over this wreath that I bought for $2.99 over the summer and I had shared on my June thrift haul. Buying an old wreath at a thrift store is a great way to save some money and sometimes you don't need to do that much to them in order to bring them back to life. And honestly, I didn't think it really needed much in order to transform it, but I still did a few things to make it a little bit more festive. I had these orange berries that were left over from my fall DIYs and I thought I'd put them to good use by adding more berries to this wreath. Now it wasn't the color I wanted because I didn't want these to be orange so I decided to paint them a midnight blue. Since this is a pretty good size wreath I decided to go ahead and paint all of those remaining berries in blue so that I would have enough and then I set them to dry. The berries only needed one coat and when they dried, they dried this beautiful matte old dark looking blue that I thought went very well with the berries. In order to secure the berries onto the wreath, I did add hot glue to each of the stem ends before inserting them into each section of the wreath. Now the only thing I did add that was brand new to this wreath was this little ornament that I had gotten from a Dollar Tree. And I thought it was really sweet. However, the bow wasn't exactly the style I was going for, so it had to go. I found some scrap navy blue ribbon in my stash and with it I created a new little bow for the little tags. I glued the bow on to the little tag with some hot glue and then I secured it with a zip tie that I had on hand right onto the wreath form and that was it for this DIY. Now this was my wreath for my front door last year and I created it all from scratch and the prices that you see are from last year as well. And if you want to recreate this, I'll let you know how much it costs. These were all 50% off and I used three of the large that were $2.50 a piece, three of the mediums that were two a piece, three of the blue picks, which were $1.50 a piece, and then three of the eucalyptus from Walmart that were 99 cents a piece which turned out to all be $21. And I thought it was a pretty good deal considering the fact that most of the wreaths I have seen are ridiculously expensive. 
So the first thing I did was remove all of the individual picks from each of the picks, if that makes sense. <laughs> you don't want to use the picks whole because then you won't be able to insert them correctly in your wreath. And I started with the larger picks and all I did was insert them throughout. I had a little bit of hot glue on the ends and just kind of made them all face the same direction. And this is going to make my wreath look a little bit larger than what it is. Now I spaced them out and then I came back in and added in areas that needed a little bit more. Next, I use the more realistic pine needles in front of those. Again, I pulled them off the picks, making them all individual. And what I did was I laid them out on the wreath first, and then I would go around, pick them back up again, add a little bit of hot glue, and then put them back in the area that they were. This kind of gave me an idea of where I wanted them to begin with. That way I didn't add too many in one area and not in the other. So then, after I did those, I added the little eucalyptus leaves from Walmart. Again, I used individual stems and then hot glued the tips and then placed them throughout. Then taking the berry picks, I removed each individual piece and added them through the front of the wreath as well. Now, remember when I made my little Believe picture frame last year? Well, I still had the rest of the bells. I only use that one. And I had some gold spray paint in my stash and I spray painted them to make them look a little bit more antique and fit my decor, added them to the wreath, and that was it. Now, this wreath is much smaller. However, you can recreate this in a larger size for your front door. I'm using these Dollar Tree wreaths that come in packs of two, as well as this cloth that you can find at the automotive section of your Dollar Tree. As you can see, I already cut it because this was the cloth that I used for my little mini stockings. So then I cut off this little end piece and then I cut several strips so that I can use on the wreath. Then I began wrapping it around the wreath and hot gluing it every few sections. I made sure that every time a piece of fabric ended, it ended on the back side of the wreath so that you wouldn't see any seams of where I would start a new piece of fabric. And you repeat this until you get to the very end. I had this cute little Christmas tree that I had pulled off one of those farmhouse trucks from a previous Dollar Tree DIY and I decided to go ahead and use it so that I did not put it to waste. I used my aged glaze to give it a stained look. I also had this cute little pack that had these little Christmas trees and it's where I got the little snowflakes for my cork ornaments. And I decided to go ahead and peel the little stickers off the back of the trees and then stain the backs of them as well. Then I got my white wreath and hot glued the little trees onto the bottom of it. And I made sure that they kind of laid in front of each other so that it looked like a layered effect. I did add a little piece of a popsicle stick to the bottom of the Christmas tree on the back to give it a little bit more stability since it felt a little wobbly. Next, I took some ticking stripe ribbon and made a little bow for the wreath. And then it was whether or not to place the bow on the top part or on the bottom part of the wreath. Eventually, I ended up choosing the bottom. 
I glued a little jute string to the back of the wreath so I can hang it around one of my DIY cutting boards that I have in my kitchen and I think it turned out absolutely sweet. And just a fun fact about this particular wreath, it was actually featured in last year's Christmas edition of Country Sampler Farmhouse Style Magazine. For this next one, I'm going to be using this khaki ribbon. I believe I got this at Walmart a while back, perhaps their wedding section. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut several strips of them and I'm going to cut them down the middle because the wider the ribbon is, the harder it's going to be to wrap around the wreath. So you want it to be a little bit narrow. So I did go ahead and cut it down the center. And I wrapped it in the same method that I wrapped the previous wreath. Now with something like this though, just be careful not to glue the front side of the wreath when you're attaching the ribbon back onto itself, just because you might see some of the actual glue seep through. So whenever you do add the hot glue, make sure it's on the back side of the wreath. And next I had these little bushes that I had gotten from Dollar Tree and I had been wanting to use it and this is the perfect time I thought. Um, I thought I was going to need both of them but I actually only ended up using one. I did have to cut them down a little bit because they were a little bit too long for this wreath. However, if you were making this on a larger scale, you wouldn't need to do this. Next I began hot gluing them on the bottom of the wreath, kind of facing away from each other almost as if you were putting whiskers, like a cat's whiskers. I don't have a cat, but if I did, I'd imagine this is what they would look like. So just leave a little space in the center and then have them kind of fray outwards. Since once I was satisfied with the little berries, I added this little Dollar Tree bow and I glued the front of it onto the wreath, but then it actually had these little ties, so I went ahead and wrapped it around the back to give it a little bit more security. And then I cut off the excess. I adjusted my little whiskers a little bit more and added some more berries and cut some in some areas. And then I added that jute string and it was finally done. For this wreath, we're going to be using a grapevine wreath, and I am going to be adding these picks for $3.99 a piece, but I did get them at 50% off. The reason I'm adding these ones is because this is the most realistic looking pine needles that Hobby Lobby carries right now. We're going to be using five of these. In order to keep costs low, I'm only using five of these, and I'm only covering a portion of the grapevine wreath. However, if you wish to cover the entire wreath, you just have to get more. But the same concept that I'll show you will apply. Now, usually I do like to break these down and make them into smaller picks. However, this one's not necessary for the look that I want to create. So I'm doing two on each side and then I'm breaking one up and adding them in a few areas that might need a little bit more foliage. Now this part I am hot gluing these onto the wreath because this is going to be the permanent part of the wreath. The rest of the items can be put on temporarily and I'll give you examples in just a sec. Now I'm doing more of a white decor on this wreath and I'm going to be using some parts of this pick. However, I did pull off the pine needles from it and I am going to be using these permanently on the wreath as well. 
So you will see that I will be hot gluing these. Now it's gonna add a different type of dimension and texture because these are a little bit different. They do have a little bit of snow on them, but it won't deter from any future designs that you may wish to add. I'm gonna go ahead and add the rest of the details that I want to pull from these picks. I think I ended up using three total and I'm adding these white holly leaves two different areas. Now, as you can see, I'm just inserting them and I've actually hooked the end of the pick so that they can stay on to the wreath. Now, I didn't do anything additional to fix them onto the wreath because I was taking it apart and recreating a new one for this video. However, if I was to put this in there and keep it semi-temporary, I would most likely use floral wire to keep them in place in case they are outside and they encounter wind. That way they don't blow away, but they're easily removed in order to create some new wreath designs in the future. I did add a couple of white berry picks as you saw throughout the wreath and then I got some simple white ribbon in order to create a bow for the center of the wreath. I simply make three large hoops, glue the ends, and then tie the center with some yarn or some jute string, and then take another piece of ribbon and tie that around the center and create a couple of tails for them to hang down on the wreath. Once I cut my little fish tails on the ends of the ribbon, I attach the ribbon again with some more string at the center. I did add a couple more pieces of the secondary pine to cover some bare spots around the ribbon. And I didn't fasten these because I wanna be able to have this area flexible in case I do anything different in the future as well. Finally, I took a little tag from those white picks that said Merry Christmas and added it to the top area above the ribbon. Lastly, I added some pine cones, again, trying to use more of those picks and I spread them throughout the wreath as well. And that is it for this version of the wreath. All right, so let's take this apart and recreate something completely new. And the reason I'm showing you the removal is that you see that I am actually using this very same wreath form. Now, one great thing about having greenery like this on a grapevine wreath is that you can change the direction in which you hang the wreath and you can have a wreath that looks completely different. For this one, I am actually gonna add the greenery to the top part of the wreath instead of the bottom. All you have to do is turn it around like I just did. And this wreath is gonna be a more gold inspired. So I had these several picks that I had gotten at Hobby Lobby, again, at half off. And I'm using these very interesting gold berry picks they're gold underneath but they actually have like little white crystals all around them giving them extra dimension so i went ahead and inserted them completely into the greenery portion without taking them apart or making them smaller but you can do this if you wish now for these ones i did cut these down in individual pieces and inserted them in several areas throughout the greenery Next, I had these gold pine cone picks that I did cut and also placed in several areas on the wreath. For this bow, I used this ribbon. Ribbons are a little bit more expensive now at $10.99 at Hobby Lobby, but I still got it at half off. And it's this really pretty burlap with gold in the center. This time I just created four loops and no tails because I was going to hang some bells in the center of the wreath. I decided to hang three bells on the center. The pick actually came with four and I believe it was for $5.99 but I did get it at half off as well. And that was it for this DIY.
for this final wreath, we are going to flip the greenery to one of the sides. And I'm going to be using these red berry picks for this. I'm using a total of four picks and I am cutting off the excess stem so that it would fit better inside of the wreath form. Next, I'm going to be using this one large velvet ball pick and I only got one because I'll be using each ball individually as one pick. Then I place three velvet balls evenly throughout both sides of the wreath. And as you can see, you really don't need that much to begin filling these areas. I'll be using this red tartan ribbon for this wreath. And in case you were wondering, yes, all of these were wire edged ribbon. For this ribbon, I added a lot more hoops going a little bit bigger as I went on. And then on the back of it, I actually crossed two larger hoops to create a fuller bow. I used some string to tie the bow together and I made sure to go underneath the very small hoop in the center so that you wouldn't see the string once it's tied as you can see here. And then I proceeded to fluff and puff out each of the little hoops. For the little tails, I decided to cut two pieces of ribbon, add little fish tails to it, then tie them in the center as they crossed each other over. And then I attached it to the wreath like this. Once the ribbon tails were attached, I added the larger bow section to the top of it. Then I pulled out the little tails so I can see them better. I did fill in any bare pieces around the ribbon with some extra pine picks, and then I added three little bells directly underneath the bow. And that was it for this final wreath look. Well, that is it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please make sure to give this video a thumbs up and let me know in the comments below which one of these wreaths was your favorite. I hope you like the idea of creating one base and changing out a few things every year to create something fresh and new for your front door without breaking the bank. Also, I wanted to thank you all for the amazing feedback that I got on my Pottery Barn Christmas Look for Less Soups video. You guys seem to really enjoy that one, so thank you. And if you're looking for even more Christmas inspiration, don't forget to check out my playlist right here so that you can see even more Christmas DIYs. I hope to see you all next week with another video. Until then, adios. We can hang out on the beach without freezing. Yeah, isn't that amazing?